Yo, 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 what's up? Here we got a green white aggro deck. This is the deck that Kibler played to a 9 1 finish at Pro Tour Origins. And the Secret Six and I, we had a Skype call a couple days ago. And we thought this would be a good choice for the upcoming meta. meta. The reason why we thought it would be a good choice is because we think it has a pretty good game against the blue, red, and soul artifact, the hyper aggro. And another hyper aggro deck, uh, mono red. And from my testing, we are writing those assumptions that this deck does beat those decks. However, it has a really tough time with Abzan and Guru Devotion. So I'm going to go over the strengths that this deck has and why it beats the mono red deck and the green white, um, sorry, and the blue red and soul artifact deck. And then afterwards, I'll go over some of its weaknesses and then. I'll kind of conclude on whether or not to play it, or when to play it, and when to choose to play it. So, the major strength you have, and what this deck is actually very, very, the reason to play this deck basically, is Dramokus Command. It's a very good Dramokus Command deck, and this card is insane versus the Blue Red and Soul Artifact deck and the Burn matchup. Um, it, and that basically be able to prevent it. Uh, Instant sorcery spell is very good against both because they're um, the way those decks are configured is that they have these really expensive, huge, chunking burn spells. Like very, like I'm gonna like, deal you five damage. I'm gonna deal you four damage, bro. So having Dramokus Command to be able to ha do two mana, invalidate that big burn spell that costs like because they cost a lot. Like Shadow Blast, even though it costs two, it costs them a card. So, and you may say, oh, it's just an Ornithopter, but it's still a card. And Soak the Flames and Inquisit Firecraft, both those cards basically cost them their entire turn. Especially the new way these decks are configured, not playing Hordley Outburst anymore, they might go back to that with, um, with the Mirror in mind, but it does cost them their entire turn. So Dromogos Command is a time walk, but it's not only just a time walk, because it does something else. It also kills a dude. It also makes them sack their island on the Great Rebel. It also it does a million different things. So this, if you think Dramokus Command is well positioned, this deck is very, very well positioned. Now, the other, basically, what this deck is trying to do is it's trying to put, um, get a early board presence in the form of uh, Fleece Bane Lion, Deathless Raptor, Warden, or even Boon Seder. and basically use this board presence to be the aggressor and force the opponent into a situation where they have to try and deal with your stuff, and your stuff is very resilient. Deathless Raptor is intensely resilient. Boon Seder is very resilient. So basically as they're dealing with their stuff you're still chipping away at them and you're still getting your board presence up. And then basically you can end the game either with a Den Protector that's huge with either Boon Seder or a Johnny or just valuing them out with like having just being much more up on cards than by like bringing back a bunch of Deathless Raptors with Den Protector or killing their dude and getting back a bunch of Deathless Raptors or playing a Johnny to go up on cards or make your guys bigger to keep on attacking through. So what this deck is very good at doing is deploying threats that are very modular. All the cards are very modular. As you can see, they all have these eternal cast casting costs or they um, do something later in the game. So you're playing this very quick aggro deck that also has some late game staying power. Now, unfortunately, as we move into the weaknesses of the deck, that late game staying power is doesn't really apply to the green decks. It's definitely this green deck is definitely the worst against other green decks. Now it doesn't mean you can't win those matchups, but it's just very hard. Um, the toughest thing this deck has has to basically deal with are the planeswalkers that either wipe the board, we're talking about Ugin, or the planeswalkers that generate a bunch of tokens. We're talking about Elspeth. Elspeth and Ugin are definitely very, very, very hard cards to beat in this deck. Um, the reason being is that Ugin usually wipes a lot of your guys down because you need a big board presence with this deck. And um, Elspeth usually like kind of clogs up the ground. And these green decks, Green Red Devotion, Abzan in particular, they're very good at clogging up the ground. And we don't really have a lot of evasion. Our only really evasive creature is Den Protector. And yes, it's the best card in those matchups, but it's really strained. Uh, we do have some evasion and more in the first tree, but it's not reliable and it's not always going to happen. And this is pretty good in those matchups. But again, making a 4-4 four four is not that great, and plus making drawing cards good, but usually I haven't had the luxury of being able to do that. 
Ajani is also fantastic, but um, he doesn't really help you get through. So that is the major issue, those two decks I found, and they're pretty popular now. I think um, the meta is not people like are switching over to Mono Red or Blue and Solar Fact. I think they're just trying to go back to Abzan and Green Red Devotion because they think they beat those decks, or at least have some good game. And or they're too comfortable with those decks and they don't want to switch and they think they could just like change them a little bit. So those decks are tough, but I found against the other decks, um, you're either 50-50 or well positioned um, against the control decks. I think as long as they're not trying to kill you quickly, you're in a good spot. You have very little ways to deal with an Ojitai. You only have these five cards. So that's a problem. And basically, the major issue this deck has is the lack of reach. And that's always been green white aggro's problem, is that we don't have the reach like our green-red deck does. We don't have any haste threats. Um, we don't have... Like, the only haste threat we have is Boon Seder, and it's very good at doing that. But we don't have many. And we really can't we really can't go over the top. Like maybe a um I'm always a big fan of what's that card called? Wingmate Rock in these type of decks, especially in the sideboard. I played in the Green White Company deck and it was pretty effective at dealing with Elspeth, Ugin, um just a lot of the cards that this deck has problems with. So that is something to try in the future. But um if you're looking to beat the other green decks, this is not what to play. But if you're looking to beat the other decks that are not green, that don't clog up the ground and or don't really um, try cookie, kill you quickly while wiping your board, then this deck is very, very good against those decks. The sideboard's been good. Unravel the Aether has been an absolute all-star against the Blue Red and Solar Effect deck, and it really just like means you'll never lose that deck, or it's very hard for them to beat you. Tragic Arrogance is basically your major plan against Green Red Devotion, and shores up a lot in that matchup. Um, against Abzan, you're going to bring in these cards. And they show up a lot too. The evolutionary leap um, kind of makes all their. They basically can't play a removal game with you. They have to lean on Elspeth, and if they have to lean on Elspeth, that's when Hanger ba Hanger Backwalker gets them. So you do show up a little bit in that matchup, but you're probably gonna lose game one. It's gonna be pretty tough if you're not on the if you're not on the play. So I think going forward, this deck is great if you expect to play a lot of mono red or hyper aggro decks like blue red and solar effect. But it's not so good against the green decks. So if somehow we find ourselves where there's a lot of control decks, or a lot of, like, the mono red decks are pushing the green decks out, then this is a good choice. If you find that Dromogus Command is very effective, this is a good choice. Um, I don't know if I'd try company in this deck. I think Johnny is just better in that slot. Just everything you want to do, it finds you cards. It also, um, like, makes your guys huge. So I don't know if I'd try that yet. Um, company into Nissa is interesting, but I don't think it's where you want to be. Alright, so this is Killer's Greenway Aggro deck. Um, I definitely think it's a metagame call. I don't know if I'd bring it to like a standard tournament tomorrow because I think just so many people are on Green Devotion. I think so many people are on Abzan. Definitely Abzan. I would just try and play a deck that just beat those two decks and didn't lose to Blue Red and Solar Effect or didn't like lose to Mono Red and we can make that better in the sideboard. But I think the decks you'd most likely to want to beat are those four and that's what you should be be preparing for and um i think those this deck beats two of those and not the other two so um thanks for watching and there's gonna be more to come guys um i think in the future i'm going to do something along the lines of like of what i did here where i'll do a couple tournaments with the same deck post my retrospective on it and then um basically kind of like wrap up the set the of testing i did and tell you what i learned basically all right so thanks for watching